Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Conan Exiles. We've uh, done some small changes to the place uh, since the last episode. We've got ourselves a stove. Uh, let me just grab the putrid meat out of here because we've got also just out here. We have ourselves a little composter which we can throw putrid meat into. And when combined with uh, plant fibres and bone meal uh, we can get compost out of that. And that is for these planters, which I'm growing some desert berries over here and some false mandrake over here. Uh, now, the main reason for growing plants, other than because they look pretty, is uh, so we can work on our dye collection. Look at all these lovely colours that we've got on the go. Absolutely amazing. And uh, we picked ourselves up uh, a performer who's quite happily entertaining us there. Uh, he's doing um, a tasteful ballet. Yeah, let, let, let's call it that. Um, but most importantly, I've made myself some weapon racks for storing all the various tools and things uh, that I've got. Rather than having to come all the way over here and faffing with uh, with that chest, we can just decide as we're leaving what it is that we want to take. Now, you'll notice that I have my pike and I have my shield and I have my bow. Uh, the main reason we have these is that we are going to go and take on the Abyssal Remnant solo. Should be totally doable. Um, I've succeeded in doing it uh, once just uh, just as a test because I wasn't sure if my technique was going to work properly. Uh, it's important to try these things out. So that's what I did last night. I'm going to show you guys the, the tactic that I've got. And this is pretty much all you need, really. Um, if you don't have one strong shield, uh, two small shields would work. If you don't have one strong pike, then uh, two small pikes, uh, stone pikes would work. And you don't even need the armor that I'm wearing once you've got the technique down. And I'll take you through that and, uh, and show you precisely what it is we want to be doing. Ooh, actually, the other thing is I should take a skinning knife with me. Last time I took a cleaver and we got a whole lot of abysmal meat out of it. Now, abysmal meat is great because it never goes off. And you can cook it up and it's pretty spectacular in terms of its healing properties. So we've got a bit of a store of that at the moment. I might want to make like a cupboard for a, for a pantry just to store that permanently. Let's eat one of our unblemished human fleshes. Um, but the big thing that we can get out of it is more hide, more crocodile hide, which we can turn into leather and so on and so forth. And make stylish armors like the one we're wearing for our team members. So... Is what I should have done before. We'll take the skinny knife with us, and I think that's all I'm really going to need. Now you'll notice that our um, skinning knife and our pike and shield are all purple backgrounds. That means that I've used Tinker's tools on them to do different things. Uh, the weapon has got extra damage, the shield has got extra durability, and the skinning knife I added extra efficiency to because it's a tool, and I want to get as many resources out of things as possible when harvesting them all very worthwhile. Um, now, the initial ones that I got uh, were given to me by my brother, um, but I've learned how to make them myself. So should we need them, we can just go around and do that. And I should say, it's such a huge difference um, when you do that. Um, so previously, uh, we were going around mining iron stone, for instance, with the stone pickaxe, uh, gradually getting two, three at a time, sometimes. Uh, now I'm using an iron pick, which gives me more, and it's got an efficiency upgrade, which gives me more, so I'm now getting five or six each time. Still the same number of nodes, they still survive the same number of hits, but you get significantly more each time. And you can imagine the time saving that that gives. That, um, that big ironstone shelf uh, that I pointed out previously, um, visiting that, I thought would give 400 with the tools that we were using at the time. With my new setup, you can easily walk away with 800. If you don't mind traveling overburdened, it is so crazy efficient. And then you do the same for your um, uh, wood cutting axe, uh, for any tool that you want to, uh, to do harvesting with, and it will just make things so much more efficient for you. Now, I haven't bothered upgrading the bow because we only use the bow to get through the puzzles in the dregs. 
But once we get there, I'll uh, I'll show you precisely what I mean with that, and uh, we will have a look at it. Might as well run around the south side. I don't often come around the south side of the Shattered Bridge. I don't think there's really anything to see around it. Ooh, just caught on. That was close. But it's worth a look-see, just in case. Nah, nothing of note. That's absolutely fine. So, uh, the dregs uh, is where we made our first multiplayer base. Uh, or just outside the dregs, I should say. Uh, so it's an area that's very familiar. Um, I know the route that I'm going to go through to get um, someone dragged up to the entrance. But I'll take you through the whole process just in case you've not seen any of the previous episodes and you want to learn about the dregs as a whole. Although there's many, many guides, so I suspect that's not the only reason you'll have come across it. <gasps> Shareback fighting a croc. I wish we could stay and watch that. That looks kind of cool. But we don't have time. We have a mission to attend to. Now you'll notice that I'm quite overburdened as it is. My armor is quite heavy, even with the reductions, as is my weapon, uh, as is my shield, etc, etc. And we're carrying a bunch of arrows. Not only that, we're not wearing any of our light armor. And light armor gives a bonus to encumbrance. Because I've been putting all my points into agility, um, we have no extra encumbrance at all. Which is perfectly fine, it's not going to cause us any issues, but it does mean that once we hit that um, maximum encumbrance level, we will just start moving slowly. One thing I do like about the game is it's, it's forgiving enough that it just slows you down, it doesn't stop you doing stuff. So if you want to carry a thousand stone, a thousand wood and a thousand iron stone at the same time, you totally can. It's just you will move pretty damn slowly. Okay, just before we start this climb, I'm just going to check something. Won't take a second. Hmm. <laughs> Now, uh, mostly I'm checking to see if I can improve the frame rate, because I noticed it was dropping to about 20. Probably most of that's down to the um, rendering details on... Uh, let's drop this down to low, actually. The rendering details on all the uh, the various twigs and stuff. Well, the game is incredibly pretty. In fact, no, that's a bit too low. settings right let's put that back to to medium and what we'll do is we'll drop the shadows down to low and we'll drop the foliage quality down to low that's a reasonable compromise reasonable compromise and it should massively reduce the impact that the game itself has on the recordings I might uh, put the shadows back up a little bit later. Just because good shadows do make the game that much more immersive. But it's not losing a lot from having the settings like this. Okay, we could go all the way up to the top, but I don't really want to. I want to pick up this chap here. So that's why we're coming around this way. Oh, tiny, tiny ding. But he's seen us. So let's get to the entrance. Are you following, friend? Yes, you are. Come on up here and be murdered. So this seal here, uh, you have to actually break this seal in order to get into the dregs. You break the seal um, by following the instructions that the ghosts give you. And the ghosts give you instructions to murder someone up on here. Now there is a bit of a clipping issue. Uh, so I advise fighting people right at the end there. I hope that that's close enough. Yes, it is. Because otherwise they kind of drop down inside and then you can't really get to them and it's it's a bit awkward and and not really fun. And then you just walk on down and that should take you straight in. Uh, let me just have a quick check. 
Let's put that back to medium, actually. We'll keep the foliage quality on low. Yeah. Now, once you come into the dregs, um, you can learn some stuff from... Uh, there's a law stone and also there's a journal uh, to teach you things right at the entrance. Then there's a chest down here. I'm going to run through most of it without just looting everything in sight because that's not why we're here. We're here to fight the uh, the remnant itself. Oh, do I want any of those? Let's, let's grab that. And then we'll just move straight on. Plenty of crocs to kill in here if you want uh, croc skins. Also plenty of goop to get from down below. I'm not really caring about any of that. Ignore the mobs where possible and just move straight on. You can spend a long time going through this. Now... I have been through once already, um, not today, uh, that was uh, the other day, and when you come to here, you need to shoot an arrow up at this, in which case I didn't actually need to bring my bow because I didn't realise it was still going to be triggered. I do hope that that means the remnant itself will have respawned, uh, but shooting shooting the bow up there, uh, the clue is with all the, uh, the arrows on the ground, um, causes the water level to raise and fall and raise and fall. That'll let you progress further into the dungeon. And you'll get much the same challenge at this point. Except the, uh, the shooting point is just across here. To the left. Just up there. Now there's a chest over this way. Uh, which I think we'll actually go and check out. We should be able to get to it and get back to this door before the water level subsides. So it's not going to slow us down by having a little look what's in here. Some bones and some plant fibers. I don't actually care about those. We've got plenty of both of them. Alley up. And into the th next section. Now there's one switch here. There's one switch just through there. And one switch just through there. You've got to get... This first one will allow you to move side to side by filling up this area. And then you need both of these ones on the other side in order for this middle section to fill up. It's not the most challenging of challenges. But it does take a time to a, a bit of time to navigate just because of the uh, the amount of time it takes the water to transition. Now down here is a bit of an arena. I've not found anything of note in here, except there is this, this wonderful acid pool, which you don't want to stand in. Standing in the acid pool is incredibly painful. Not recommended whatsoever. I've had a look around, I haven't found any uh, journals or hidden secrets or lore stones or anything like that in here. There is one chest, but well, well, silver coin, I'll take it. I don't think there's one over the other side. No, it's, it is just that one thing. Even the cobwebs do nothing. So, we're just going to push straight on towards the boss fight. Now, we're going to have to go through some skeletons to get there. Uh, these guys like doing uh, like a bit of a charge at you. So stab them a couple of times, then dive out the way. There he goes. You can hack them apart if you want. You'll get some bones, you'll get some putrid meat. I don't think it's really worth it. They're a bit uninteresting. So uninteresting I'm actually going to ignore those two remaining ones. Now this section, as you can tell from the water going up and down, is much like the others. Uh, the point to shoot is actually over that side. And there is a chest over there uh, that you might want to go and check out. We're not going to bother. We're just going to... Oh, we can't quite make it across. Oh, fine. We'll have a look around this bit instead. Just for a moment. Isn't it pretty? I actually really like some of the architecture in here. 
No idea how that fire keeps burning when the water level comes back in. But, I mean, I'm not an alchemist. It might be Greek fire for all I know. So once you've uh, you've made it up here, you come through and this is the final area. And from here we can hear the abyssal remnant. He is upstairs, he is not happy. And the technique that we're going to use is we're going to use our shield, blocking rather than just holding it. And we're going to use that to advance on him. Yes, he is back, cool. Until he gets angry enough with us to, to start um, either physically attacking or dive down into the water. When he dives down into the water, that's when we'll retreat, get our weapon out, and then we'll stab him as he comes towards us. So here we go. In close. Attack me. Alright. Come at me, bro. You can do better than that. Okay, down he goes. Weapon comes out. Stand back beyond this. And when he steps up, go to town. I'm trying to get as much bleeding on him as I can. But you can see his health is going down pretty quickly. And that will do. Back behind cover. Get your shield out. Wait for stamina. And back out we go. Standing in the centre will make him want to either spit acid, at which point you back up, or attack you or dive into the water. Now you can back off a little bit and then he won't actually get you with that melee attack. Ideally you want to be kind of like around here, but as soon as he gets back into that liquid, I keep saying water, it's acid, not water. You just back up and then get all the stabbing going. Two will do. Shield out. And back up we go. Back up for the acid. Back in. Now my shield's taken quite a bit of damage already. Um, I've been a little bit too close to him. And he's been very angrily just um, attacking me with his mouth. And as long as you're back past that edge, you will be safe from his attack. You get any closer, can't guarantee it. Alright, that'll do. Shield back out. Stamina up. And this is what we're going to do for the entire fight. We're just going to rinse and repeat. And hopefully he'll die before our durability goes. This is why I said it could be useful to bring a second shield. Now the shield does block all the damage, but it takes durability damage itself. Stab, 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 stab. At right, that time my stamina started coming back a little bit, so I had a small opportunity to get a third stab on him. That was very lucky. What are you doing? Vomiting acid. Now you can do this without a shield if you're exceptionally good at dodging. I'm not. So I, I'm happy to just stand and use a shield. Come on, go down. You are taking so long, mate. I don't want you to regen. There he goes. Weapon comes out. You see that he's getting damaged about the same rate as the shield. Right, three hits and then down we go. Now if needs to be, I can finish him off with the, um, with the bow and arrow. But I would much rather he just dies before the shield does. He's about half dead though, so it's not going to take us forever to do this. Back from the acid. And it's not the most complicated fight ever. Right, down he goes. 
as long as you stick to the rules, keep yourself safe. Stamina back, and up we go. You want to be close enough to him that he actually triggers the sink into the water. But you do need to keep backing off for both the attacks and that um, acid breath that he uses. Ugh. There he goes. And he always makes that noise just before he heads down. I mean, you can, you can see the sequence. I don't need to massively explain it to you. But uh, this is totally possible to do before being a massively high level. Knowing this technique. Because I've not got any points in strength. I've not got any points in vitality. Oh, he's going down straight away. All right, back up. i uh, not got any points in vitality either. It's only my armor that's giving me the occasional bit of bonus stuff. And I wouldn't even say any of that's notable. I'll take you through exactly what I'm wearing after this. But the biggest thing is the shield. Uh, it's got quite a high durability. And if it didn't, I would bring another shield. Or three shields even. Come on. As it is, the shield is going to outlast him. Right, there he goes again. One. Ah, ah, ah. Two. Ah, ah, ah. Three. And then we run away. Now, you've got to make sure that you have enough stamina to get away from him because his acid does hurt. Right in the face, mate. And at this level, you can see that the bleed that I've stacked on him is continuing to do damage. I mean, we could finish him off with our plink plink bow if we wanted, but it's much easier to, to do enough damage in melee combat. So if he dives down once more, that'll be him done. Come on, just go for it. There he goes. This is going to be it, everyone. And if you skipped most of the fight, welcome back. All the face stabbing. And that is a that is a large bloated snake corpse. So we're going to take to it with a skinning knife. Let's get some cool stuff. Now if you take to it with a cleaver, you will get abysmal flesh. Um, wow, we got 107 reptile hide. And 20 fangs, that's pretty good. And the abysmal eye. Now, things to note, you can learn recipes from that down in there. But this pit will refill after a short period of time. So you don't want to stick around in there. And that is the abysmal remnant. Let's uh, return to the surface. You can just use that and it'll take you back out of the dungeon. And just to show on the map, we went into the dungeon just here at the Drakes and it brings you up just on the very south side of this unnamed city. Now we are quite a way away from our bed, um, but I'm gonna bring us back across to the bedroll here, uh, just across Skulker's End because there's a chest that's worth pointing out on the way. Now, there are 
nasty, nasty beasties en route, so do be careful with your return. And in our case, we are quite overburdened because we've got to... Uh, in fact, can we just drop a little bit? Is that enough? We're still over encumbered. Right, let's drop a little bit more. Let's drop... I don't need another Star for the Triumvirate. I've got two already, and uh, one of them I have some demon blood in order to awaken it. Okay, so there is a Defari camp just up here that's worth exploring. But that's not where I'm going to take you. I'm going to take you across onto the bridge because there's a little chest just on top of that. Tiny scorpion on the way. No, you don't, mate. Tiny scorpion is cute, but... Hey, no! That is not allowed. You all saw it. Tiny scorpion cheated. In fact, let's, um... Let's get some chitting from him. Let's actually drop the chitin because... Oh, you know what? I'll take half of it. Because it'll overburden us otherwise. Right, so as I was saying, there's a Defari camp just here. And there's a, a journal of a prisoner uh, that's quite interesting to read. So I'd recommend having a look at that if you get a chance. I think he's uh, like in the middle of this section. We're not actually going to loot these guys. We've got plenty of other things that uh, we need to be doing with our time. But I am going to take us through this bridge area. And climb down carefully onto here. Hop over this. Do a little bit of hop climbing up. And that will take you quite nicely to this chest. In fact, let's, let's get a little bit of regen going. What have we got this time? We have a drum, which is cool. A glass flask, which is cool. Uh, mm. Bone shield's nice. How It's pretty damaged. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's not actually worth taking the drum for that. I can always take the time to learn how to make another at some point. Climbing back up over here will allow us a relatively safe descent on the other side. And that'll take us back to pretty much where we started. Job is a good un. All right, let's uh, have a look. Did we leave anything worthwhile behind? I don't think so. I think we've got everything that we wanted from here. Maybe that wooden bowl. But no, that is all cool. Okay. Well, in that case, I don't actually have um, a truncheon, so there's no point in us trying to capture anyone. I could skin some people on the way back, but I don't think uh, we're going to do that. I think we're just going to head back to our main base. So let's do a very quick return. But that's that's the Drake's Dungeon, everyone. And uh, it's, a, it's a fun one to, to go through. Pretty nice, easy dungeon once you understand how you're supposed to approach it. Certainly a good introduction to uh, uh, to dungeon running in Conan. And with the lore and, uh, and the notes and the backstory and everything that it gives you, there's a lot of really interesting stuff to find out about, uh, about that. To start with the Triumvirate, um, we then use at the Tower of the Bat to get an Awakened Star for the Triumvirate, and that will teach us some other things. So what I might do is I might quickly head back to base, drop this stuff off, pick up the staff, pick up the albino bat blood that I got last time, and then we'll see if we can sneak past the bat in order to activate the uh, the staff. We don't need to do the fight again. The fight will take us quite a while. And also our kit's a little bit damaged, so I'm not massively keen on, on fighting a giant bat. But we can have a look. In the meantime, I can drink a little bit of beer because it's going to be a long journey. Man. I was going to say they're still fighting, but it's actually a three-way fight now. 
Confirmed. Conan Exiles gets a Battle Royale mode. You saw it here first, people. Don't, don't attack me. You're not going to win. You're going to embarrass yourself. Then you're going to die. And you're just going to die embarrassed. No one wants that. I don't want that. You don't want that. I don't want to have to stop to kill you. That'll just be inconvenient. Okay, back at the broken bridge. Everyone hates us. Maybe, maybe the crocs hate us because we're actually wearing what's almost a giant croc in itself. I mean, reptile hide at least. We look very croc-like. As you can see, I've taken the time to, to dye everything so that it's kind of like golden and red. Nice and stylish. Not quite the, uh, the red viper, but uh, almost... Almost. Alright, and we are about to start on the return climb. Now this should be pretty yeah, straightforward. Oh my god, killer crocs there. Now we could try and take on killer croc. Um, but it will probably take us about an hour to kill. Killer Croc has an exceptionally large hit point pool. Uh, the Scorpion, which my brother managed to kill, um, took him a number of different weapons, but he had to keep going back and making new weapons. Um, and he penned it in. Uh, that technique seemed to work um, well enough, but uh, at this low level, those world bosses, they're, they're supposed to be for end level, uh, sorry, end game people who want a bit more of a challenge. We could dodge him for hours and hours and hours, but one bite will kill us. Definitely don't want that. Home sweet home, people. Let's drop off all of this reptile hide. In fact, can I, uh, let's repair these, seeing as we have so much on us. No, don't buy it. Cool. Still got just under a hundred left. Uh, right. Okay, reptile hide, I think I need to... Strip the hide. Uh, let's get... A hundred out, and then we can put that on the tannery, and that will give us a ton of leather. We'll keep the abysmal eye here. Um... The abysmal, in fact, no, the eye and the fangs will go into the other thing. Right, let's do this properly. Coin goes in there. Anything that comes from a creature goes in here. Let's get another hundred hype going, actually. Seeing as we have spares, we may as well get it all going. Uh, and the chitin also came from a thing, so that goes in there. Right. Uh, let's actually take the bows, uh, the bow and arrows, because you can cheese the bat boss, and if we can't get past the bat boss, we can at least try and do it that way. Um, but I'm going to leave the shield behind, because we're not going to need that. I need this and wood to repair the shield. It's always worth having spares 
so uh, not like entirely spare equipment although that wouldn't necessarily be the worst idea but spare resources so that you can get your stuff repairing as and when you need to And last time I went and fought the bat, I took a cleaver with me and we cut his head off, which was like absolutely wonderful. I loved it. Um, but this time we're going to take the uh, skinning knife. Let's leave that behind. And I think we're good to go. Stuff the triumvirate and the albino blood. That's what we need. So one of those and... That will do quite nicely. I'll do that just so we're not overburdened. Okay, so the Staff of the Triumvirate and the Albino Bat Blood. You're supposed to take the Staff of the Triumvirate up here onto the Cursed Way. Uh, we did that with uh, my brother on Monday, and he got to activate his because uh, he got the Albino Bat Blood after we killed the critter. I went back and uh, killed it by myself, which was uh, totally solo, totally unaided. Uh, although, to be fair, he did glitch out a little bit, which made it a tiny bit easier. The AI does suffer from some problems, and uh, there's definitely game balance issues that need addressing in the game to stop you cheesing bosses. Like the first time we fought the, uh, the Abysmal uh, Remnant, you shouldn't be able to just like kill him at range with arrows without suffering any consequences. I think that's poor game design when it lets you do something like that. All right, let's just get up. They can be angry all they want. We don't care. Although I will take these off for the next climb bits because it's easier to climb when you're not wearing heavy armor. Even if you're still carrying it. Let's go sideways and up this bit. And up. Cool. And this is our favorite ascent point. Climbing stealthily in the middle of the wall. Minor issues like this I don't think are, are game breaking. I mean it'd be nice to have them addressed, but uh, it's not it's not like the game itself wouldn't work like if it were it, it's not giving me an unfair advantage doing that. Right. Uh, let's harvest some of these for false mandrake seeds. Okay, where, 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 where? Three false mandrake seeds. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, we've got our arrows. Uh, let's drop that extra stone and branch. We don't need them. We've got some stuff for regening. Okay. So, bat dude. What we're probably going to do is we're probably going to just like charge past him. I don't know how sensible this is. Okay, that didn't work. Plan B, guys. Plan B. I'm totally fine with plan B. Ultra of the bat. It's crafting. Now the question is, can he hit me too? I can hit him. Alright, that's fine. I would love to get bleed on him, but for the moment I'm happy with him just not hitting us. 
Oh, jeez, that's not going to help. Okay, well, we'll get our staff back. Last time I fought him, I did it with sword and shield. Got my staff. Little bit of stabbing, little bit of regen, little bit of bleed. What do you mean no ammo? Do the ammo like that. Definitely don't want to get caught by that. Okay, off the edge we go. Oh no! Ah! Falling damage actually took us out. Okay, well, not a problem. I'm gonna run back and grab my stuff. It will be easy enough for us to get. That's just me uh, misjudging the fight. I mean, we could have... Uh, we could have left without trying to actually kill the bat again, but without the, uh, the shield, probably not the most sensible move. Still, we'll be able to carry all of our stuff back without any trouble. So we'll just run in, we'll grab it, and then we will make the return journey. But I think that's probably a good point for me to finish that episode. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I do hope you have enjoyed this run through the dregs and then the little uh, tiny visit to the Cursed Way afterwards. If you are enjoying these videos, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you should probably do so, and you'll be told when future episodes go live. Otherwise, I'll see you next time for another episode of Conan Exiles. See you soon.